Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. It is your host Weeb Union and starting out we see that the Russians have indeed launched their Kursk counter offensive which has led to about 125 square kilometers under Russian hands during this counter offensive which has lasted just a few days. We received information about it delayed because neither the Russian or Ukrainian side were reporting on it. The offensive started in a very interesting manner from a push from Koronevo and from across the same river. The Russians started building up for this operation by sending troops to Koronevo and staging counterattacks to recapture the eastern parts of the town just across the river line and pushing in an eastern direction to divert Ukrainian resources from the south to the north. At the same time, they crossed over with units from Rilsk down across the same river and then sent troops here to the eastern parts in under the guise of defending against the further Ukrainian incursions. Instead, what we saw was a Russian switch from this eastern direction of Korenevo down south directly towards Nagost, which is, as you can see, the flank of the Ukrainian positions at the front line here to the west. In coordination with this assault, the Russians launched a second one. It was launched in the direction of this road from Gorodivka down to the south, all the way to Snagost in the north, where the objective was to flank the Ukraine positions here along the front line in Vishnevka, Komarovka, Krasnoktibrika, and Abanasovka here in the western parts of the Kursk incursion. The Russian objective was to gain control over this set of villages, while at the same time attacking Snagost to the north to cut off the Ukrainian positions to the west of it. This forced a Ukrainian withdrawal from these villages through the line of fire and out towards Ugochovka. The reports suggest that some were cut off and encircled, others managed to escape, and many were hit on the run. This weakened the Ukrainian positions here to, to the west. This entire operation took place as soon as the Ukrainians started a rotation, where as soon as the units started leaving, the Russians took advantage of that to launch this strike. We have just one geolocated footage of this offensive with this geolocated footage of Russian vehicles in the direction of Snagost, and we see the video itself here. We see in the video that the Russians launched an armored convoy from Koronevo in the direction of Snagost. This armored convoy just moved normally along the road. They had a decent distance between them, so if artillery struck, they wouldn't all get hit at the same time. Some have a larger distance than others. So we see that they are generally experienced units and not completely fresh ones. During the drive, they suddenly went off-road and went directly towards Snogost, where they started fighting on a wider front, shooting while driving. And this was a large enough force for the Russians to be able to spread out across the town and take control over it fairly quickly. This means that the Ukrainians were not properly prepared to send their own reinforcements to deal with this offensive, and at the same time that they weren't properly prepared to have enough forces due to their rotation. All of this while we see a lack of Ukrainian artillery support here in this direction, no FPV drones, no artillery hitting these armored vehicles, they just drive directly into Snagost with no issue. This shows that the Ukrainians were in a very weak position ahead of this Russian counterattack, and this is why it was so successful. Russian intelligence worked well to determine the exact point at which they had the biggest advantage. And as we see with this footage here, the Ukrainians really stood no chance to hold back this Russian counterattack. And similar to the initial Ukrainian incursion into Kursk, the Russians managed to recapture 125 square kilometers within just a day or two. With this, the Russians have recaptured this village chain of and further up north along the road connecting all the way from the Ukrainian border in the south and up towards Koronevo in the north. This has strengthened the 
flank of the Russian Sea to the east of the same river and re-establish a connection between Koronevo and Klushkovo and the rest of the Russian settlements to the south of the same river. At the same time, we see that the Russians will now be able to make an additional push in the eastern and southeastern direction, where the objective of the Russians would be to cut off Ukrainian supplies of the units, both here on the eastern flank of Koronevo, where the Russians could flank them from the south to completely cut off their supplies, and additionally to push towards the village chain of Lyubimovka, Novo Ivanovka and the general area right here, which would allow the Russians direct contact towards the western flank of Sutsha, which would be an attack on the Ukrainian rear. And as mentioned in yesterday's video, there is this river line that drives through the eastern bank of Sutsha, where the Ukrainians would be a bit stuck between the Russian positions to the east and then the river line to their back which could force a Ukrainian withdrawal across the river line back across towards Sutsha to strengthen their western flank and at the same time to secure their eastern forces from encirclement. This could spell the end of the Ukrainian Kursk offensive as the Russians could develop this much further. But we have to wait and see. This could be a simple single file assault where the objective was to recapture this village chain to secure any physical supply road not across a river line here in the south of Koronevo and securing Koronevo as well to develop it for further counterattacks directly from it or simply just to secure the southern bank of the same river line. We see here to the south that the Russians have done another river crossing across the Sel River where they have managed to recapture Borki, flanking the Ukraine positions in Spelnoe, which forced the withdrawal of their units down to the west. So this means that the Russians will recapture Spelnoe as well, for the second time recapturing both Borki and Spelnoe. And this is what adds up the 119 square kilometers in the west with the 6 kilometers in the east to 125. In the eastern section of the front line, we see that the Russians have pushed further within Ryvarivka, the Russian Ministry of Defense claim full control over Ryorivka, however there is no evidence so far of this claim, and with the fortified possessions of the Ukrainians in the southern flank of Ryorivka, until further confirmation, I will not change the front line, leaving it simply as a gray zone. Further south, in the direction of Ukrainsk, the Russians have launched an attack along the northern side, where they've managed to capture a significant portion of the remaining parts of the Ukrainian line of defense here to the south of Solidove, north and west of Ukrainsk. The Russian objective here is to flank Ukrainsk, gain full control over this fortified position, which will lead to Russian foothold within Sukoryne here to the west of Ukrainsk, combined with a push on the southern flank would lead to the Russians fully encircling Ukrainsk. At the same time, the capture of these fortified positions to the north of Ukraine could lead to the Russians gaining a foothold in the northern parts of the town. So we see that the Russians are not just attacking the flanks, but they have also stormed the town directly from the south and from the east. This has led to the encirclement of Ukrainian presence within the fortified positions to the east of Ukraine. And this just shows that the Ukrainian positions in Ukraine is very difficult. The general situation for the Ukrainians across the front line is that they are now completely on the defense. Whatever the initiative they gained, whatever advantage they gained with the Kursk offensive has just been thrown out the window with the Russian counterattack. The Ukrainians were forced to redirect forces to Pokrovsk to stabilize the front, and this has just led to the Ukrainians giving up on the Kursk offensive, as the Russians will now completely take the initiative and likely push the Ukrainians out of the Kursk region and potentially even into the Sumi region. And that is all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe and check out my Patreon for additional content as well as YouTube membership. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.